Hi, and welcome to CAM Look, your daily dose of the Cincinnati Art Museum. Each weekday, a staff member or a volunteer shares a work from our permanent collection and poses a few questions for discussion. We ask you to check back every day at 10 a.m. for a new work and a new chat. Hi, my name is Emily, and I'm the Director of Learning and Interpretation at the museum. And in my role, I do a fair share of gallery talks about how to look at a work of art. And I should say there's absolutely no wrong way to look at a work of art, unless you get too close and then our guards get a little nervous. I will say that there is a big difference between seeing a work of art and really looking at one. So today we're gonna look at this painting, Alexander the Great and the Fates by Bernardino May. Um, I use this painting all the time to talk about how to look at a work of art. And it's not only because it's really big, it's approximately seven feet tall by 10 feet wide, but it's also chock full of different symbols for you to see. So several years ago, there was a study that was done and asked people how long they actually look at a work of art when they're in the museum. And I bet you would guess, oh, maybe a minute, two minutes. You might be surprised to find out 10 seconds. So I thought we would look at this work of art for 10 seconds and see how many things you pick out. Okay, let's go. Ten seconds goes by really quickly, doesn't it? What did you see? Did you maybe see the broken hourglass, the scissors, maybe the artist in the back, or the nitty naughty? Bonus if you know what a nitty naughty is. So now we're going to look at this work of art for just a little bit longer. And if we were in the galleries, I would use the visual thinking strategies method of questioning. And that's based on three questions. What's going on in this picture? What do you see that makes you say that? And what more can you see? And I should also add that I don't typically give the name of the work of art because that's too much of a cheat. So if we were going to be in the galleries, we would spend upwards to 15 minutes looking at this work of art, trying to figure out what's going on. And we have rich conversations of deciding what is happening in this picture? Why is that woman doing that thing? Um, and it's just so much fun. I encourage you to do it on your next visit to the museum. And by the time we've talked about this work of art for, like I said, 15, maybe longer, 15 minutes, maybe longer, people are dying to know what's going on. So what is going on in this painting? Well, as I said before, the title is Alexander the Great and the Fates. So we have Alexander, young, handsome, resplendent in armor and red drape, but funnily, not wearing any shoes. Alexander was an ancient Macedonian ruler and one of history's greatest military minds who established the largest empire the ancient world had ever seen. He also died at the age of 32. Along with Alexander, we have the three fates or more, Clotho, Lachesis, and Atropos. The more controlled the mother thread of life of every mortal from birth to death. They were independent, directed fate, and watched that fate assigned to every being by eternal laws might take its course without obstruction. Both gods and men had to submit to them. So from left to right, we have Clotho, the spinner. She spins your lifeline. Then we have Lachesis, the allotter, who measures the length of your lifeline using a nitty naughty. And finally, we have Atropos, who was the cutter of the thread of life. She chose the manner of each person's death. And when their time was, had come, she cut her lifeline, their lifeline with her shears. As you can see in this painting, Atropos is ready to cut Alexander's lifeline. The angel of fame intercedes, but Alexander's time is almost up. As he stands on Father Time, the broken hourglass tells us Atropos will complete her task. This painting was created in 1667 by the Sienese painter Bernardino May. Having ability and a powerful patron from his hometown helped May rise from obscurity as a provincial artist to fame and fortune in Rome. Fabio Cicci, from a powerful Sienese family, actively supported him. After becoming Pope Alexander VII in 1655, Cicci summoned May to Rome in 1657. There, May regularly painted religious pictures and other subjects for the Pope and his nephew, Cardinal Flavio Cicci. So the next time you come to the museum, I hope you will look for this painting in Gallery 202. You can't miss it. It's pretty big. And I hope you will practice those questions. What's going on in this picture? What do you see that makes you say that? And what more can you see? 
and then practice on a few other paintings as well. Thanks for joining us today and have a great day.